Uh, hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm going to be doing a little tiny project on my solar panels this um, for this uh, vlog. So I've said before, if anyone's seen my previous ones, um, how I've got my 300 watts up well, panels on the roof now, um, and I've got the Victron MPPT, and all my panels connected up in parallel. And I've always wanted to be able to switch between parallel and series, depending on the time of year, and do some testing on the parallel and series system, because um, there's a few people out there say one's better than the other, and no one really knows, I don't think, because everyone's got their own opinion. So that's what I'm going to be going on doing today, and whilst I was up on the roof yesterday, I found that my original connection block up there um, has been letting in water, which has gone corrosive. It was an IP65 box I think I had up there, um, so I'm going to be replacing that with an IP66 box, and hopefully that'll be better. Whilst I'm doing this, um, just to give you a heads up, anyone who's got a um, an Asia Twin van, same as what I've got, there is a Facebook group out there, um, show you the picture below. Um, it's a great group to go on to, which I'm on, and a lot of other people that give good technical advice, um, good um, reviews on the vans and modifications that people are doing, and just a general social group of people across the countries really across quite a few countries um, so it's worth if you've got one of these vans going onto Facebook and joining up that Facebook group so if you've got one of these Asia Twin vans so what I'll do then I'll just grab the camera and um, go up the roof and I'll show you um, how bad the connection is up there at the moment and work through what I'm going to be doing with the test today all right so the old box that I've just took the cover off up here on the roof you can see I don't even see in there but there's water in there um, these are copper plates for making up the um, the buzz bars and you can see they've all corroded in that so water's got into this box even though I pretty much sealed it around the outside um, and the cover well it's supposed to be an IP56 now I can't remember what IP um, each one was but maybe it wasn't robust enough to stay in it um, water's got all in the box in there as well condensation so quite bad really it's going to cause a lot of problems with soda even though it is actually working um, it will cause um, high resistance on all the junction box and stuff like that so that's going to cause a problem so the new box I'm going to be putting in is this one it's a lot bigger and I've got the junction uh, the buzz bars in there it's for everything to connect up and I'll show you when I've done this how I'm going to get this to be able to change this from being serial connection or parallel connection depending on the time of year so I'm going to give that a go and um, be nice and this is a high I think it's IP66 um, but I looked up in a minute I don't think it's written on it anywhere um, still got to put the glands on and stuff like that, so still got quite a bit of work. Um, my main thing at the moment is I've just taken off the, the old cover for the NDS. This has been extremely hard to get off. As you can imagine, it's sycophlet, sycophlexed the whole lot all the way through. Um, but it is moving now. I'm hoping, two, two ideas. One is to pull this old NDS cable out, run my own cables through because um, this has been badly damaged by Adria dealers on the inside and also then I'll have um, less um, joining of the cables because this is not long enough I'll have to join onto this and it's the extra things that could break down so, right, so I just pulled the panel out inside the van where the solar comes in so anyone didn't know this is uh, the fridge just above the bed here where we put the heater control the panel on the side there is the where the solar cable comes in and this is it here going up through the roof now I've got a lot more slack on this cable than I thought so sort of change of plan if I can pull some of this slack up into the roof then I'll be able to go straight into that new box with this cable rather than run a new one through right so a bit more of an update this morning I've decided to pull in two new cables so I've got two proper um, solar panel cables these are UV cables so they don't get break down with the UV light on the roof so and they're also four mil which would be powerful enough for what I've got on the roof um, and these connecting to here you can see I've just took this panel down here which is the one with the heater control which is over here and um, that's only held on by two brackets at the back easy to take off it's only four screws it just makes it easier to do the job rather than damaging this because you could end up pulling that off or breaking it um, out of the wood because it's probably only MDF anyway that they're screwing into um, for the fridge, I took the fridge out and I'll show you that in a minute how I did that because the cable for the roof was a bit tight so there's a hole in the roof here which is just under the fridge compartment where the solar cable comes in and then it just slots 
go through the top of the roof here and then into the corner here to go into the cupboard. So if you, anyone out there wants to change their solar panel cables, um, it's much more easier than I expected. I expected it to not have this inspection hole um, and it was getting tight to get things through, which is the reason why I took the fridge out. So this makes life a hell of a lot easier. You can run cables through here quite easy. Um, you could probably upgrade this to six mil cables if you wanted to as well, depending on how much solar you're putting on your roof. Um, so a quick look at the top of the fridge. While it's out, it's my nice overlook. So the 12 volt connection is just a connection into here, which unplugs easily. And you can see here there's an inline fuse, which I didn't know about. So if your fridge is not working, anyone out there, this is a good little tip. I'll put this on the Facebook group, age of Facebook group, that there's a, a fuse in here. So if your fridge packs up for some reason, I'll show you how to get this fridge out in a minute when I put it back. Um, and this is something to check if ever you have a fridge that don't work. Just pull that top off and there's your fuse. Very handy to know that. It's a little tip there, which I'll, like I say, I'll put it on the Facebook group as well. So for getting the fridge in and out, I'm just about to put it back in. As you see, it just slides into the hole. It would um, be easier doing this with two people rather than your own because it is a little bit heavy. It's not too heavy, but it's heavy enough to, and awkward to be able to do that on your own, but it's doable. So I'll just push it in, I'll show you the screws. The fridge is in, in place. You see these holes here? So these have little tiny plastic covers over them. So you just pull these off. You can use your fingernails usually to get these off. And then in here is some little posy screws, two down this side and two down that side. And that's it, so four screws and then close the door and the fridge will come out. And that makes it much easier then for getting the solar cables through, but also it's nice to know that the fridge comes out easy if you ever need to get to that fuse or if you need to do some maintenance or anything else. The fridge is screwed back in again, little white caps on top. Um, just remember when you're doing these, up these screws, don't over tighten these, these are only there to hold it from moving in there. Um, so it's, it's just the security screws really. If you over tighten them they're going to pull out the wood in the back or even bow the fridge a little bit if you push it over too much. Um, so they don't need to be too tight on them. So I put it on, I powered the fridge up um, just to make sure all the electrical connections are made properly and there's no pushback pins. And now I can get on with doing the roof connections for the solar. Alright so I've just done a quick clean up of the van top. Get rid of as much sick flex as I can because it's going to make a good seal. And I've cleaned out the inside of the cover. It's important to do this so that you get enough sick flex in this and glue it down to keep a good waterproof joint. Um, and I've cleaned up a bit of the hole because there's some quite jagged edges that were catching on the cables and cutting into the cable. Um, so to clean all that up, I just use a so I use a Dremel with um, a diamond tip blade on it, um, which cuts through the sick flex quite easily. I mean, gives it a nice clean up. So the next thing is to get this sealed because the weather's changing, I'm hoping it don't rain. I need to get this sealed before any weather bad weather comes. So for the sealant, I'm using this Sikaflex 522. Um, this is the best stuff to use because it's a flexible sealant, so it won't crack like silicon. Definitely don't use anything like silicon on the roof. Um, the UV light will break it down and it'll crack and start to leak. So it's expensive, but it's definitely worth using this to protect your van from any leaks. So the first thing to do is make sure you get a nice bit of Sikaflex all around the cable joint and then a bit more and fill up the cover to put on and then I'll weigh that down we'll wait to set overnight. Right, so that's all the sick flex done. I've weighed it down with a weight so it sets now um, and put extra around the cable outlet to make sure there's no leaks. And that has set now for 24 hours. So I'll get on with taking the old box off and replacing that now while that sets overnight. So internally, um, I've decided to take this connection off. This is one of the, the connections that Adria use for the solar. They're, they're pretty good connections, um, but with solar, the stronger the connection, the better. And these clamp down and do become loose. And any loose connections on solar will mean a reduced amount of current because we're, look, we're working with low voltage and low current. And you want as much or every bit of current we can go into the battery. So I've decided instead to put one of these on, bolt to the wall, and they're nut and bolt clamps through proper crimps, so there's no way of that being loose. And this cupboard is all covered over so you won't see that when it's finished. So that's the next thing now, is to get this cupboard all put back together again. Okay, so that's all the panelling put back together again. The side bits in. Um, so that's all the inside of the van done. I can now get on with just finishing off the roof and the electrical connections on there. Right, so I've now replaced the old box to the new one. So this has been sick flexed in. 
and the NDS connection's been a few days now. Um, you see a bit of brownness on it, it's just where the weight that I was holding it down started to leach a bit of rust. I've got four connections, both sides of this box, and then the inside buzz bars, which I'll show you later how I'm going to use to be able to change this from series to parallel. It's a much bigger box, it's the only one I can get really from Amazon. Um, the best one I can get really to get the cables in there without being too tight. The next one down from this box they had was a bit too small. Um, but it's going to hopefully be much better than I originally had and hopefully it doesn't leak. So I'll get on with putting the cables in um, and then I'll show you all up and running and working. Alright, so I finally got finished the connection block. So at the moment what we've got is just a bit of, is the, the whole system is at the moment is all connected up in series. So the outside edges here, that one there, and this one over here are my connections that go down to my MPPT. This is the positive side and that's the negative side. And then every other one that's coming in, this one here, pos positive, negative, just one solar panel. Um, this one here, positive, negative, another solar panel. And this one here, positive, negative, is my third solar panel. So that's three solar panels coming in, connected on to this buzz bar. And with these links in here, one here and one here, it means that the whole system's wired in series. So the positive comes in through here, out to that panel, back into this negative, onto this panel, back into this negative, positive here, out in that panel, and back into here, onto this negative. So the whole thing's wired in series. And in a minute, I'll show you how I will take them links out, put these ones in, and wire it all up in parallel. And it should be realistically a 10 minute job to convert between series and parallel depending on time of year and this is only purely for practice to see whether there is any difference between the two so with my voltmeter on the two outside edges taking all the panels I think hopefully you can see this in the sun but I'm pulling 61.6 volts coming out of my panels at the moment and we're quite a bright day today no clouds in the sky um, and this is March time now one thing to bear in mind when you're doing this when you start connecting up in series, the voltage goes up high, as you can see 61 volts. Um, it should give me about 6 amps, and that's quite a high voltage for electric shocks as well. So be careful, do cover your panels up when you're working on anything like this, especially in series, which a lot of people don't consider, because they think that parallel, low voltage series is fine. Um, so it's just a safety thing to remember. So I'll go downstairs now, we'll, connect, we'll turn the M, um, my MPPT on, because it's off at the moment, and we'll see what we're getting through the solar charger. Right, it's down now into the van. I've got the Victron app up and running. You can see we've got nothing going in there voltage wise um, because it's all switched off. So it's my isolation switch, so I'm gonna switch that on now. And you can see I've got 60, just went up 61. It's just dropped down a bit now because it's gonna be taking current out and converting it. So between 48 and 55 volts I'm getting coming in. Current in is about two amps and coming out is around 4 amps bulk jumps up to 4 amps and 4.6 <coughs> so that's series connection on a good day what I want to do now is disconnect it all while it's still in charging in bulk and connect up in parallel and see if I get much more current than that now it's settled a little bit I'm getting about I'm, I'm going to say round about just under 7 amps on total right so now I've covered up most of my panel there's a little tiny corner over there and there's a little corner over here showing um, because I'm getting, if I connect up in series, 20 volts which is, if I go to one panel, about 5 volts per panel I'm getting which is enough for me to be able to work on this safely now but this is what you should be looking at doing because um, it isn't good to me or the controller if you start shorting things out or touching things that are, that are them high voltages so I'm going to take these links out and I'm going to connect the others up and show you what it's like now in parallel. Alright, so now I have everything wired up in parallel. So if this is my positive input here, you can see my positive has got this link to the panel of the next one positive, which is then linked to the next panel positive. And negative is the same. Negative is linked through this one here to this negative and then this one to this negative. So they're all the negatives together and all the positive together. So voltage reading now, if I go between the output on this, I'm getting 20 volts total, which is correct because in parallel we get the voltage of one panel, whereas in series we get the sum of all the panels. So I'll go downstairs now um, and 
turn on the MPPT and see what I'm getting with the Victim controller. Right, so back downstairs, logged into the Victim controller, just about to switch it on to see what we get. So we're getting the 20 volts coming into the Victim controller, which we'd expect. Current wise, at the moment we're still sitting at 6.6, 6.3. So you can see now, even with parallel, I'm getting about the same current that I would do if I was connected up in series. The difference is the voltage, if you look at the voltage, can actually drop down to nearly 15 volts at some point. And I'll look it up in a minute in the manual, but I'm pretty sure the Victron needs around 14 volts to switch on. And this is the problem with winter at that time. At the moment, I've got blue skies in March. I mean, the sun's very low, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. So you'd expect to get low sun, and I'm getting a good charge. But on a cloudy day this time of year, that voltage would drop so much that this wouldn't actually switch on, and you'd be lucky to get anything. And that's where series comes in handy, because series will still give you around 25, maybe 40 volts. So it'll still give you some current output. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch the uh, back over to series, and I want to show you what happens if one panel becomes shaded um, and see what we still get on the charge because a lot of people worry about series and the fact that when one panel gets shaded they lose all their solar completely right so i've covered over one and a little bit of the other panel so you've got one panel almost out of the circuit completely to the sun i'll just take the voltage reading across the whole lot and we're still getting 30 volts and if you look down here on the mppt if it's, you can see it i will take it indoors i'm getting 1.6 amps and 30 volts down into it. So in series, you can see that even though you block one out, you still get a charge. People used to moan about this, and, it's, and this is all down to what's called the bypass diodes that are fitted on the panel. As soon as one panel loses voltage completely, the diode on the panels will bypass that panel, allowing the voltage still to run through. So for now, this is about it for today. All I'm going to have to do is learn to disconnect it all because these buzz bars have come loose again. I tried using a um, Gorilla Glue and I've tried using the Sikaflex but just came off um, so I'm going to have to use, look at probably epoxy these down because I don't want to screw through these because I don't want water getting into this um, compartment but you can see earlier when I had the buzz, the parallel links in um, why I've gone such a big box it is taking on quite a bit of cabling but at the moment quite happy with it it works quite well for changing between series and parallel but it does look like this series is winning for winter time and we have to see when it comes to summer time how good parallel really is. Right so last night I've uh, epoxy resin the terminal bars back down. Still a little bit soft, it's only been about 12 hours I suppose or 15 hours but it should set much better than what I originally had there. There's no movement at the moment. Um, so I've connected it up in parallel, give it another test today because at the moment there's uh, no sunshine as you can see. The clouds are covering over. So it'd be interesting today. I just have quick five minute test to see what I'm getting on parallel and then I'm going to connect it all back up in series. So I'm going to go downstairs and turn the Victron on. Right, so we're just about to switch on with the parallel and see how much we're getting. Typical, the sun's started to come out now and I've got it all connected. Um, so we've got about 20 volts almost, which we expect from the panels, just under, and we're getting two, between two and two and a half amps charge with a 13.5 13, 13 volt coming out so I'm assuming then as long as we're getting this high voltage we're obviously going to switch on I mean I haven't looked up yet what the Victron does but I'm not getting I wanted to see what happens if we get a really cloud day and it drops below the 13 volts whether the Victron will actually switch on which I'm probably going to do on a more wintry day but at the moment today the sun keeps coming out so it's not going to be able to test it this way so what I'll do now is I'm going to catch up in series do another little check and then I'm going to leave it in series connection for the next few months. Right, so okay then, so now the series connection, switch on again. You've got good voltage, 60 odd volts up there. And we're getting about nearly 4 amps coming out. So I'm, a, I'm actually getting more on the series in this day. It's dropping up and down, it's not 100%. Um, great test really, you have to do this over a long period of time but the series is giving out the same as the parallel, a little bit more 
and I should be hopefully getting a continuous current flow on the series because the voltage should be higher during the winter months. As you can see 300 watts on the roof on a March day I'm only getting roughly 60 watts so if you've got 120 watt panels on your roof you're going to be lucky to get um, anything enough to be able to pull a charge on these vans. All right, so that's the end of this vlog. Um, I hope that's been of some use to some people. Um, I'm going to leave the van set up in the series connection on the solar panels up on the roof. It seems to be giving me quite a good um, charge. You can see the myth about people saying that if you have series and one gets covered up in um, shade that you end up losing all your charge. Well, I've fully covered one of the panels completely and I'm still getting a charge. So um, if you look it up, they have a bypass diode across each of the panels. And so the idea then is that the voltage drops on the panels because it's shaded so much, the diode then bypasses that panel so that you still get a solar um, charge. I'm not sure what the best one is still, even after doing all that testing, because the weather isn't great and it's only been a like, five minute test really. You need to do a lot longer than that. What I do is over the year, um, I'll probably do, do different setups. More needs to do it in the winter time. The main reason for what I'm doing is winter time. I did find that this winter with the parallel connection, a lot of days when we was going away, the voltage was dropping so low on the panels that the Victron wasn't turning on. So we was getting only about a couple of hours of charge and even that was only a few amps. So the idea then is to be able to switch the series in winter and hopefully, because the voltage should be a lot more higher, um, the Victron should be on more during the day, maybe you get six to seven hours a day um, being switched on and even at a low current, you're still gonna get hopefully more charge and that's a theory um, other people have done other tests out there to look it up um, so it's just an easy way it takes me about 10 minutes to switch now between parallel connection and series connection um, so it's quite an easy setup so I'll see how we get on but please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and um, the next thing we'll be doing is probably our trip to Holland because um, it's only a few weeks away now in April and we should be off touring around um, the Netherlands so I'll see you around there